In this video, we're going to talk about the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is a phenomenon where the frequency that is detected by some observer changes because either the source is moving or the observer is moving. So let's say we have a source and this source emits sound waves in all directions. And let's say we have an observer. If the source moves towards the observer, or if the observer moves towards the source of the sound waves, the frequency that is detected by the observer, that's FO, that frequency is going to increase, which means the frequency measured by the observer will be greater than the frequency of the source. So let me give an example of some numbers. So let's say you have a source that's moving towards this person. The source may have a frequency of 800 hertz, but the frequency that the person will hear is going to be higher than 800. It might be 850 hertz. And so that's the basic idea behind the Doppler effect. When either the source or the observer is moving, the detected frequency it's going to shift, it's going to be different than the original frequency that uh, the source emitted. So whenever the source or the observer moves toward each other, the observed frequency is going to be bigger than the source frequency. Now the reverse is true. Let's say if the source is moving away from the observer or if the observer is moving away from the source, then the frequency that the observer detects, that's going to decrease, which means that it's going to be less than the original frequency emanated or emitted by the source. Now let's draw a picture. So here's the source. And we're going to draw some waves around the source. Okay, my drawing's not perfect, but we'll make the best of that. Let's make one more wave. So let's say we have a person here. We'll say this is John. And to the left is Karen. Now, the source of the sound wave, this could be like an ambulance trunk or a police car. This is moving towards John. And let's say that the frequency emitted by the source is 1000 hertz. John, let's say John and Karen are stationary observers. They're not moving. So their speed, their VO is zero. Now, as the source of the sound moves towards John, the frequency that John is going to hear is going to be higher than 1,000. It might be 1,100. Now, the source is moving away from Karen, so the frequency that Karen detects is going to be less than 1,000. It's going to be like maybe 900 or 800. And let's talk about why. As the source moves toward John, Notice that the distance between the crest of the waves is decreasing. So therefore, the wavelength is decreasing. Whenever the wavelength decreases, the frequency increases. So that's one of the reasons why the frequency increases as the source moves towards John, is because the distance between waves is decreasing. But now, as the source moves away from Karen, we can see that the distance between the waves is increasing. So as the wavelength goes up, the frequency goes down. So anytime the source moves away from a person, the frequency is going to go down because the wavelength is increasing. But when the source moves towards a person, the wavelength decreases and so the frequency goes up. So that's a visual representation of how the Doppler effect works 
when the source is moving and the observer is stationary. But now let's talk about the formula that we could use to solve problems. The observed frequency is equal to the frequency of the source times V and then it's plus or minus V naught over V and then you could write this as plus or minus or minus plus. You can still get the right answer regardless of how you choose to write the, write the equation. But what you need to realize is that V is the speed of sound which is 343 meters per second. Now the speed of sound in air is dependent on the temperature. And here's the formula that describes that relationship. The speed of sound is approximately 331 plus 0.6 T, where T is the temperature in Celsius, and V is going to be the speed in meters per second. So at a temperature of zero degrees Celsius, this disappears. You simply get a speed of approximately 331 meters per second. When a temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, based on that equation, the speed is, let me use the approximate symbol, it's approximately 343 meters per second. And at 25 degrees Celsius, the speed is approximately 346 meters per second. So the speed increases by 0.6 meters per second for every increase in one degree Celsius in temperature. When the temperature increases by five degrees Celsius, the speed increases approximately by three meters per second. So that's the formula that would help you to get an estimate of the speed of sound in air given the temperature. But if the temperature is not specified, we're going to assume that the temperature is at 20 degrees Celsius. So we're going to go with this number. So if you're not given the temperature or the speed of sound, simply use 343 meters per second for the problems that we're going to solve in this video. Now, in order to use this equation successfully, you need to know when to use the positive sign and the negative sign in the numerator and in the denominator of that fraction. So how do we choose when to use what sign? Well, we need to have an understanding of fractions. A fraction is made up of two parts. There is the numerator on the top and the denominator on the bottom. Now, what you need to know is that the value of the numerator is proportional to the value of the fraction. So what does that mean? When you increase the value of the numerator, the value of the fraction goes up. So in that sense, they're proportional. What happens to one happens to the other. If you decrease the value of the numerator, the value of the fraction goes down. Now the situation is different for the denominator of a fraction. The denominator is inversely related to the value of the entire fraction. That means when one goes up, the other goes down. So if you were to increase the value of the denominator, the value of the entire fraction decreases. And if you decrease the value of the denominator, the value of the entire fraction increases. So make sure you understand that relationship. Uh, feel free to write this down because we're gonna use it to talk about when to use these signs. So let's consider the first situation. That is when the source is moving towards the observer. So Vs represents the speed of the source. Vo represents the speed of the observer. If the observer is stationary, that means Vo is zero. If the source is stationary, that means Vs is zero. But let's say in this situation, the observer is stationary, but the source is moving towards the observer. What sign should we use in front of Vs? Should it be positive or negative? So the fact that the source is moving towards the observer, what's going to happen to the frequency? That is FO. Anytime one moves towards the other, we know the frequency is going to be higher. FO is going to increase. Now, VS is in the denominator of the fraction. So if we want the whole fraction to increase, 
Should we increase the denominator or should we decrease it? Well, we know the denominator is inversely related to the value of the fraction. So if we want the value of the entire fraction to go up, we need the denominator to go down. So therefore, the only way we can decrease the value of the denominator is to use a negative in front of Vs. So when the source moves towards the observer, we're going to use negative Vs. That's going to decrease the value of the denominator, which will increase the value of the fraction. And so the observed frequency is going to be higher than the source frequency. Now, let's consider the other situation. That is, when the source moves away from the observer. When the source moves away from the observer, we know that the frequency that is observed or detected by the observer, that has to go down. The source velocity is still in the bottom of the fraction. It's still in the denominator. So the only way we can decrease the value of the entire fraction to get a lower FO value is to increase the value of the denominator. So we need to use positive Vs. If we increase the value of the denominator, the value of the whole fraction goes down, FO becomes less than Fs. Now let's consider the next situation. So here we have the source. And this time the observer is going to move toward the source. Now, when the observer moves towards the source, we know that the detected frequency is going to increase. And we're dealing with VO now, not VS. And VO is in the numerator of the fraction. So should we use positive VO or negative VO? What would you say? Well, since FO is going to increase, the value of the entire fraction has to go up. And to accomplish that using the numerator, we need the numerator to increase. So therefore, we need to use a positive sign for VO. That's going to increase the numerator. Now, what about if the observer is moving away from the source? If he's moving away, FO is going to decrease. So in order to decrease the value of the whole fraction, we need to decrease the numerator. So therefore, we need to use a negative sign in front of VO. So let's put this all together in one page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the position of the source and the observer because the signs of V will correspond to the direction of the arrow along the x-axis. So in this situation, we're going to have the source moving towards the observer. And when that happens, we're going to use negative Vs. Notice that the arrow is pointing towards the left. If you put the source on the right and the observer on the left, the direction of the arrow is going to correspond to the sign in front of V. So when the source moves towards the person, use negative Vs. The denominator will decrease and the value of the fraction and thus the detective frequency will go up. Now for the next scenario, the source is moving away from the observer. So we're going to use positive Vs. Notice that the arrow is pointing towards the right in the positive x direction. So in this case, the denominator is going to increase in value. The frequency is going to decrease in value. Now for the next situation, here's the observer, and this time the observer is going to move towards the source. As the observer moves towards the source, we know that the detective frequency is going to go up, and so the numerator has to go up. Thus, we need to use positive VO. Now for the fourth situation, the observer is moving away from the source. So the detective frequency is going to go down and the numerator must go down in order to accomplish that. 
So this is going to be negative VO. So as you can see, when you place the observer on the left and the source on the right, the sign in front of V corresponds to the direction of the arrow. So it's negative going towards the left, positive going towards the right, if we put the observer on the left and the source on the right. That's only when it's going to work out that way. But anytime the source or the observer moves toward one another, in all cases, we see that the observed frequency increases. And whenever either the source or the observer moves away from each other, the detected frequency decreases. So make sure you understand that concept of the Doppler effect. So now let's work on some problems. Number one, an ambulance truck emits a sound with a frequency of 800 Hertz. Part A, what is the frequency detected by a stationary observer if the ambulance truck is moving 30 meters per second toward the observer? And we're given the speed of sound in air at 20 degrees Celsius, which is 343 meters per second. So let's go ahead and work on this problem. Let's draw a picture. Now it's gonna make it a lot easier if we put the observer on the left and we're gonna put the source on the right. The source is gonna be the ambulance truck. It's emitting a sound with a frequency of 800 Hertz. The frequency is also related to the pitch. They're the same. So a sound with a high pitch has a high frequency. Now this ambulance truck, which is the source, it's moving towards the observer. And here's the formula. FO is equal to FS, and then it's V plus or minus VS, I mean, that should be VO, over V plus or minus VS. So we need to determine if VS should be positive or negative. So the arrow points towards the left, VS is going to be negative. So if we choose a negative value, we know that the denominator is going to decrease and the value of the whole fraction and thus FO is going to increase, which is what should happen whenever the source moves towards the observer. The detected frequency should go up. So now that we know which sign we need to use, we can go ahead and get the answer. So the source frequency is 800. The speed of sound is 343. The observer is stationary, so he's not moving anywhere. VO is zero. And then VS, we're going to use a negative value. The source is moving towards the observer at 30 meters per second. So this is going to be 800 times 343. And then 343 minus 30, that's 313. So the detected frequency measured by the observer is approximately 877 hertz. So this is the answer to part A. Now let's move on to part B. What frequency will be detected if the ambulance truck is moving 30 meters per second away from the observer. So we still want the source to be to the right of the observer. And let's rewrite the equation. Now, what should we use for the sine of Vs? So the arrows pointing towards the right, this is going to be positive Vs. So this works if you put the observer on the left and the source on the right. Now, as we can see, when if we choose a positive sign for Vs, the denominator will increase in value. And so the value of the whole fraction is going to go down. And the source, as it moves away from 
the observer, we expect that the detected frequency or the observed frequency should be less than the original source frequency. So let's go ahead and get the answer. The source frequency is still 800. The speed of sound is still 343. VO is still zero, but this time we're going to use positive VS. And VS is 30. So it's going to be 800 times 343 and then 343 plus 30, that's 373. So this is going to be 736 hertz. So as you can see, it's less than 800, which is what should happen when the source moves away from the observer. The pitch or the frequency should decrease. So that's how you can solve some basic Doppler effect problems in physics. Number two, a stationary ambulance truck emits a frequency of 1200 hertz. Calculate the frequency detected by the observer if the observer is driving toward the ambulance truck at 25 meters per second. So let's begin with a picture. We're going to put the observer on the left side, just like before. And we're going to put the source on the right side. Now in this problem, the observer is moving towards the source. Now let's write our formula. So we need to determine if we're going to use positive or negative VO. So what would you say? Should it be plus VO or minus VO? Well, because the observer is moving towards the source, and for this particular situation, it's going to be plus VO. And here's how we can reason like we've been reasoning before. As the observer moves towards the source, we know that the detected frequency has to go up. And since a VO is in the numerator, the only way in which we can increase the detected frequency using a numerator is to increase the numerator. And that can only happen if we use positive VO. So now that we know the sign of VO, we can plug in the data that we have. So the source frequency is 1200. V in this problem is 343. The source is stationary, so Vs is zero. And then Vo is moving at 25 meters per second. So that's the observer. Now 343 plus 25, that's gonna be 368. And we're going to divide that by 343. So for part A, the frequency measured by the observer is going to be 1,287.46. But let's round that to the nearest whole number. So we'll say 1287 hertz. So that's the frequency that the driver is going to detect as he moves towards the ambulance truck. Now let's move on to part B. In part B, the observer is driving away from the ambulance truck. So this time he's going in this direction. So it's going to be negative VS. Because he's moving away, we know that the detective frequency will decrease relative to the source frequency. And to accomplish that, we need to decrease the numerator. So we need to use, I put VS, I meant to put VO. So we need to use negative VO. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So the source frequency is still 1200. 
V is still 343. VS is still 0, but the only thing that's different here is we're going to plug in a negative VO, which is, so it's going to be negative 25. Three forty three minus twenty five is three eighteen. So it's going to be twelve hundred times three eighteen divided by three forty three. And so for part B, the frequency picked up by the observer is going to be if you round this to nearest whole number, one thousand one hundred and thirteen hertz. So as you can see, it's less than twelve hundred because the driver is moving away. But for the first part, it's greater than 1,200 because the driver is moving towards uh, the source of the sound. Now let's move on to the next problem. Number three, a police car is moving west at 20 meters per second toward a driver who is moving east at 25 meters per second. The police car emits a frequency of 900 hertz. What frequency is detected by the driver? So feel free to try this problem for the sake of practice. Now let's draw a picture. So as long as we place the observer on the left side and the source on the right side, the signs of VO and VS, they're going to match with the direction of the velocity of these two objects along the X axis. Now, the police car, which is basically the source of the sound, it's going to be moving west. So it's going this way at a speed of 20 meters per second. Now the driver is moving east or towards the right at a speed of 25 meters per second. So automatically, because we have the observer on the left and the source on the right, the direction of the arrow is going to be the same as it's going to be aligned with the sign of VO and VS. So we're going to use a positive value for VO and a negative value for VS. And just to confirm it, the observer is moving towards the source. So that action will increase the detected frequency. VO is in the numerator of the fraction. So in order to increase the frequency, we need to increase the value of the numerator. And so we need to choose a positive value for VO as opposed to a negative value. Now the action taken by the source as it moves towards the observer, that action will also increase the detected frequency. VS is in the denominator of the formula. And in order to increase the value of the fraction, we need to decrease the value of the denominator. And we can accomplish that by using negative VS. So I want you to understand how that works because that can help you to choose the appropriate sign if these two are not in the, the right position. So now that we have everything that we need, let's go ahead and plug it in to our formula. So the observed frequency is going to equal the source frequency, which in this problem, that's 900 hertz. And then that's going to be 343. Now we're going to use plus VO. So the speed of the observer is 25 meters per second. And then we're going to use minus VS the speed of the source or the police car is moving 20 meters per second west. So this is going to be 900, 343 plus 25, we know that's 368, 343 minus 20, that's 323. So 900 times 368 divided by 323. So we get this answer. The observed frequency is going to be 
25 hertz. So as we can see, it's significantly higher than the source frequency of 900 because both the source and the observer are moving toward each other. So that's going to greatly increase the frequency that is detected by the observer.